five and two in league play. The Rye Garnets at four and one. Clark's down south, the North Rockland even up at three and four. The White Plains Tigers at one and five. The Clarkstown North Vikings still looking for their first victory in league play. But today, the Tigers and the Garnets able to do battle on the ice here at Playland. Hi, everybody. I'm John Carradio. Welcome to another edition of our Cable 3 Sports Special. And for the first time this year, we take a look at high school ice hockey. And we've got the hottest rivalry around in Westchester as the Mamaroneck Tigers meet the Rye Garnets. John Zegras and his Garnets coming in as the number 10 team in New York State. A 5-2 mark in league play, 10-4 overall. Mike Schiaparelli is the head coach of the Mamaroneck Tigers. They are at 5-1, or pardon me, 4-1 as we mentioned, and at a 7 and four slate on their overall campaign. Earlier this week, we had a chance to kind of preview this ball game and have a chance to talk with both of the head coaches and give us an opportunity and an opportunity to find out exactly what this rivalry is all about. So let's roll it from right here at Playland and at Rye Country Day where the two teams got ready for the match. In the Rhyme Marinick game, the Tigers have been on the short end of the scoreboard more times than not. But that has only helped to intensify this great rivalry. Well, it seems to be, uh, it's been going on for about 10 years now, and uh, we have trouble beating. And we're always losing by a little bit, a goal, a two, or one a little late, and uh, we keep trying to battle back, and it's just a great rivalry. I mean, both schools, the fans come out, and they cheer on every single shot, every hit. I mean, it's just a great, great game. And uh, we have a good time. We have a really enjoyable playing it. For tonight's encounter, Mamaronek will have some fine players of their own that may give the Tigers that added push to the victory. Number 11, Job Friedman, a junior right winger, leads the club in scoring with 17 goals and 14 assists. On the defensive side, junior goaltender Lance Kelly makes 90% of the saves and gives the Tigers a real post in front of the net. But stats and records don't mean much when this game starts. Even the coaches have to be restrained. I would die to be out there and to play. Uh, I uh, went to my marriage myself, so I mean, it'd be nice to go out there and play. But my kids um, are an extension of my hand, and they do the best job they can. We have a real good first line. I got, well, I think it's the most outstanding goalie in the league. Uh, defense is starting to play better now. Our uh, second line now seems to be clicking a little bit, and then the third line can come through a little bit for us, and so we'll be in good shape. I think it's because of the, of the closeness of the communities, and where the parents probably more or less are the ones who started this. The parents are the ones who compare their children to our children, who's better, who's not better. And that's been going on since probably 1978. Uh, the White Plains Rye rivalry was very big. That has subsided. Mamaronek has come in, and what we have is just competition between parents, and it's caught on. Granted, we have beaten them in the past a few times, but this game tomorrow to us, it's like taking a state championship on. I look forward to it once a year, twice a year, whenever we have to play them. And it's something I get myself pumped up for, so do my players. The Rye High School hockey team, one of the more successful programs in Westchester County, is doing it the right way. The only way you get better is by playing the best. And head coach John Zegras has taken his kids throughout New York State to find the best, and as it turns out, to beat the best as well. What we try to do with them is to get them exposed to college coaches and to play the best competition in the state. And that's our main objective, is to be exposed. And you only get better when you play against the better teams. We're a Division B school going against Division A's. And it's been successful for the years that I've been at Rye High School. We started this around 1980 to, to, uh, to go outside of New York, into the New York State, but into the west side, up by Albany, the Ithaca now, the Rome, and now we'll be going to Messina in a couple of weeks. And what it simply does is makes it a better high school team in an overall perspective. The chemistry between the coach and his players is also very strong, and that seems to have helped in formulating this winner. Senior center Bobby Holmes, the club's leading scorer with 33 goals and 35 assists, gets most of the ink, but this team has many different guns, and we should see them all on the ice tonight. Well, the Rye Garnets indeed taking a, a look at some of the best hockey teams around New York State. As a matter of fact, they were up in Rome, New York, in the Rome Invitational and were beaten by the number one Rome Free Academy, 6-3. to three. Mamaronek, on the other hand, they basically stay down here in southern Westchester. But when you're playing this game, Rye and Mamaronek, all the records get thrown right out of the window. It is indeed a hot and intense rivalry, as you will experience as this evening rolls along. Stay right where you are. As we continue in just a moment after this short timeout, we will return to the Playland Ice Casino for the hockey rivalry. Ryan Mamaronek coming up in just a moment. And we've got
got a quick whistle. And we'll have our first faceoff. Save made by Keith Suriano. We had expected to see Russell Winfield, a freshman goalie for John Zegras. And uh, he uh, pulled as a late scratch in Suriano in number 31. So we're about ready for the faceoff. Bobby Holmes, number 12, loses the faceoff to the Tigers. Puck kicked around in the zone. Rye looking for the breakout. Pass in front, knocked away. Drive by number 20, Dennis Doherty. Goes wide, and now the Garnets look to break out. Keith Collins, number four, crosses the blue line into center ice. Still has the puck. Holmes now will come from behind, and he's written off the play very nicely. Puck taken away by Dennis Doherty, and now the Tigers look to break out. 23 is Dan Fowl, had two goals in a win against White Plains last week here at Playland, but the Marinick Tigers are offsides. And that stops the play with 14-11 to go in this 15-minute first period, and we have no score. And it gives it their all, and uh, Rye, as John Zegras mentioned, there's another offside. As uh, John Zegras mentioned, uh, the Garnets look at this as uh, for a state championship. That's how uh, intense this rivalry can become. Ryan Haggerty will be centering for the Garnets. He goes against Sam Rubensall, and the Garnets come away with the draw. Jerome Kenny, number 19, feeds it on the left wing, and the shot is good. Number nine, Ryan Haggerty, his 23rd goal of the season, and the Garnets go on top quickly, 1-0. That goal coming at the 58-second mark here in the first period, and Haggerty... A freshman, the center, on line number two for the Garnets, and Rye very quickly on top, 1-0. So Haggard, as I mentioned, his 23rd goal of the year, he has 37 points on the season. And uh, we're gonna get another look at it here. Beautiful centering pass, and Haggerty beating Lance Kelly on the glove side, and Rye with that 1-0 lead. Haggerty to center, on the line for the Garnets. This time the draw won by Dennis Doherty of the Marinick, but the Garnets right with it. Tommy Holmes, number 20, lost it on a good poke check, and uh, we'll have another stoppage of play. As Haggerty and Doherty tied up along the boards, and Ryan now will change the lines, bring out uh, their first line. Centered by number 12, Bobby Holmes, leading scorer for the Rye Garnets this year. As a matter of fact, coming up between periods two and three, We'll have a chance to meet uh, Bobby Holmes and uh, hear some comments from some coaches who have to play against them all year long. There's a wicked drive and a beautiful save by Lance Kelly. Keith Collins blasted one. Now the Tigers try to come the other way. John Freeman with a weak slap shot. And the Garnets able to retrieve. They clear to center ice. Nobody there, but that'll be a shot on goal. No icing. John Ronan for the Tigers. Comes to Darty. Looks to clear to center ice. Puck picked off by Keith Collins. Good centering pass. Bobby Holmes tries to put on a dink and a beautiful check by John Rohn. It took Holmes right out of the play. Rye still with the puck. Collins can't get a hold of it, and we've got a whistle, and we're going to have an interference call. Our first penalty of the match, and it's going to go against the Mamaronic Tigers, I do believe, and that will put Rye on the power play for the first time in the ballgame. Joff Friedman, number 11. We'll go into the penalty box two minutes for interference. There you take a look at the scoring. Haggerty from Holmes and Zegras at 58 seconds of the first period, giving Rye that 1-0 lead. So Freeman gets two minutes for cross-checking. And uh, one of the changes here to uh, try to alleviate the fighting situations that uh, they had a few years back uh, with the 15-minute penal period, penalties now at two minutes. Used to be a minute and a half. Now they're going to give them a little more opportunity to spend some time in the sin bin. So the Garnets with the puck and the power play. Holmes feeding it away to Haggerty. Haggerty across the blue line. Everyone's on side. Haggerty whistling behind the net. Looking for a centering play. Holmes with a great job to keep it in the zone. Haggerty back to Holmes. Looks to feed him, and the Tigers clear it the length of the ice. Jimmy Isaacson sends it all the way down, and Keith Suriana plays it. Oh, Reich or Mamarinick coming up with it on shorthanded behind their own net. Scott Spires centers it. Nobody's there. 
Now the Garnets look to break. Tommy Holmes to Haggerty. Drop pass nicely. Holmes skates out in front, tried to feed in front to Greg Zegras. It's kicked aside. Minute three left in the penalty to Mamarinic. Come top of the key. Tommy Holmes still has it. Fanned on the shot. And the Tigers again clear it the length of the ice. Jimmy Isaacson sends it all the way down. 50 seconds remaining in the penalty to Friedman. Ryan's not had many opportunities on this power play. Ryan Haggerty, rink wide. Keith Collins, number four. Bobby Holmes, right in the middle, has it poked away from him. Holmes with a drive, that's high off the stick and up into the crowd. See, a good-sized crowd, as always, has showed up here at Playland for this Rye Mariner game. And yes, they like being on TV as well. 11.45 left to go, first period. Rye leading by a score of one to nothing. Ryan Haggerty, freshman with the goal. There you see the shots on goal so far. Rye with three, Mamarinick with one. The Tigers having a little trouble getting the offense on track. Ryan Haggerty to center, and he will go against Dennis Darty. Puck comes out of the zone. 25 seconds left in the Mamarinick penalty. Suriano plays it behind his own net. Leaves it back there for George Viscalis. Lost the puck. Backhander just off the post. Almost found its way into the corner. Darty almost with a shorthanded goal. Holmes up the middle. Ryan Haggerty across the blue line. He's got Jerome Kenny behind him. Haggerty tries to go to distance. Puck loose out in front. Comes back out to the point. And the Tigers able to clear. Penalty is over. Suriano comes way out of his net. He clears it. Here's a blast from the point. High up over the net and off the glass. Centering pass, and that one just tipped aside. Don Foul goes back behind the net. Darty trying to chase it down. Almost had it out in front. Now it's stolen by Ryan Haggerty. Haggerty up ice, leading a three on two, but the Garnets will go for the change. Drop pass to Tommy Holmes. Puck loose out in front. Another good save. Lance Kelly right there. Tigers playing excellent defensive hockey, but having trouble getting something started on the offensive side. And now the Garnets will change up the lines as the Tigers retreat. John Ronan, number 14, behind his own net. Pass comes out, intercepted by Holmes. Let's it fly, kicked away. And we've got a whistle. And I'm not exactly sure what the call is. Uh, the uh, net moved, and uh, that causing the whistle. And uh, they will reset it and have a face-off right in front. There you see a quick change in the rise scoring. Uh, they gave the goal to Haggerty, but changed the assist uh, from Zegras to Jerome Kenny. So Holmes and Kenny get the assist on the Ryan Haggerty goal. Holmes, incidentally, that is his 36th assist of the year, a total of 69 points. Tigers still, most of the time, most of this first period, playing in their own end. Puck intercepted. Keith Collins tries to chase it down. Now the Tigers look to break it out. Cameron Fowl, number 15, centering pass intercepted by Bobby Holmes. Waits for Collins to get onside. He does. Jeff Starpoli in the corner. Centering pass goes behind the net. Scott Spires chases it down. Takes a good check there. Sam Rubensaw clears it around the other side. Cameron Fowl now. Hooked there by Jeff Starpoli. Holmes with a drive. That's kicked away. Oh, Bobby Holmes teed it up right in front. Another glove save. Not a very good clearing play by Kelly, but they're able to get it out of the zone. Kelly made the glove save and then just dumped it right out in front, and Rye almost with an easy chance. 9.25 left to go first period. Rye leads 1-0. Good action. Most of it, however, in the Mamarinic end. Holmes plays it off the boards. Star Poli. Finally able to get it across. That'll be an offsides call as soon as Rye touches it. There you have it. Keith Collins of Rye got the puck and then brought it back across the blue line uh, for you uninitiated hockey buffs. That blue line, if you're on the attacking team on the offense, the puck has to be the first across the blue line. The puck has to go first. Let's take a look at that last flourish by uh, the Rye Garnets. Here's Bobby Holmes as he just tees it up and uh, off of the stick. And uh, never did get to Kelly. I thought he made the save, but uh, Holmes really looking to blast one away. Mamarinick now gets it out into center ice. John Friedman 
sends it behind the net. Suriano comes out, pokes it to the corner. Tommy Holmes, just a freshman, up ice. Haggerty able to slip the defense. Now lead pass and a good one to Jerome Kenny. Kenny, wrist shot off the post. He had beat Kelly. Centering pass. Haggerty out in front. Holmes can't control. Tigers look to clear. Job Friedman across the red line. Puck intercepted by Ryan. Comes back out to center ice. Now Haggerty, he has a two-on-two as two Holmes on his wing. Haggerty still with the puck. Now ridden off the play nicely by Josh John, senior number eight. Holmes centering pass. Collins scores! Beautiful pass. Tommy Holmes right out in front to Keith Collins. The senior right wing scores his 24th goal of the year. And Ryan now leads by a count of 2 to nothing. 8.15 left to go first period. Let's take another look. Watch the beautiful centering pass by Holmes as he does a great job digging it out of the corner. And all of a sudden, he will find a wide open. Here comes Holmes. Finally gets a hold of it. Centering pass and a beautiful shot beating him on the, nor on the near side. So Keith Collins, his 24th goal of the year, gives him 58 points. Chance for the guard or for the Tigers. And a good save by Suriano. Sam Rubensall walked right in on the doorstep untouched. And we've got another whistle. And we're going to have another penalty. And I believe this one is going to go against the Rye Garnets. It is. It will be number eight, Nick Adams. Adams will... Uh, no, pardon me. Uh, it's going to be Keith Collins, number four, in the penalty box. And uh, Mamarinik is also going as well. Ted Haley, number 21, a senior defenseman, heads into the box as well. So each team will be a man shy, skating four on four with 8.01 left to go here in this first period. 2 nothing the score. Ryan leading Mamarinik. Here's a look at that last scoring. For the Garnets, number four, Keith Holmes. Keith Collins, pardon me. Picks up the goal. Bobby Holmes already with two assists in the game. And Haggerty. Ryan Haggerty with a goal and assist. Pardon me, that's Tommy Holmes with the assist. Bobby Holmes with an assist as well in this game. So we've got... Uh, a high-sticking penalty against Ryan, a cross-checking penalty against Mamaronik. Uh, two minutes apiece, and each team now will skate. Oh, Ryan has two in the penalty box. So it'll be four on three. The Garnets shy one man, and they're able to clear it the length of the ice. Check out who else is in uh, the penalty box. Uh, it is number eight. He was uh, heading in there first. Eighth grader Nick Adams, defenseman. So this is a power play for the Mamaronic Tigers. Bobby Holmes just dumps it in to the Mamaronic end. And the Tigers have four skaters. 7.35 left to go. First period. Dennis Doherty crosses the blue line. Tries the center. Knocked away. Doherty still with it. And Bobby Holmes right there to clear it. Comes out to the point. Up last. Kicked the side by Suriano. And it does come out of the zone, and Holmes may have a breakaway if he hustles. Across the blue line, tries to put on a good move and takes a heavy hit from John Friedman. One minute left in all three penalties. Puck loose in center ice. That's an offside. A delayed offside call. Why will track it down? Greg Zegras, and as he holds it up there, the offside's call is made, and we'll have a face-off just outside of the blue line. 6.50 left to go, first period. 49 seconds left in those three minors. Two against Rye, and uh, one by the Tigers. Here's that last attempt. There you see uh, the hit that uh, Friedman put on Bobby Holmes. Good check there. So the Tigers still with the puck. Trailing 2 0 here in the first period. Darty across the blue line. Dumps it back. Joff Friedman across the ice. Weak slap shot. Ryan tries to clear. Zegras gets the handle of the puck and sends it the length of the ice. 
20 seconds left in the penalty. 6.20 to go. Lead pass to Don Foul. Foul, senior left wing. Digs into the corner. Haggerty there to ride him off of the puck. Comes out to the point. The glass kicked out again. Rebound. Just slips past the crease. Mavarinick with a golden opportunity there. Penalties are all over. Teams are all now. Deep in the Mamarin again. Puck cleared out. Fans like that last check. Put on by Job Friedman. Segrist in center ice. Dumps it into the zone. And we got an offside call. And play really starting to get a little rough. And uh, the fans really starting to whoop and holler here at the ice casino. 540 remaining to play in this first period. It's Rye 2. And the Marinick nothing. Ryan, the number 10 team in New York State in Division A. And uh, that is quite an accomplishment when you remember that Rye, in terms of enrollment and in Section 1, a Division B school. And they have been taking on, especially this year, they have really been playing some of the top powers in New York State. And uh, they're going to be up at Albany Academy next weekend to meet uh, number two Albany Academy. Ryan Haggerty with a steal on the Mamarin again. Centering pass to Tommy Holmes. And the puck loose still in the corner. It'll be tracked down by Mamarinick's Michael Ray. And we've got another whistle and uh, extracurricular activity starting to get out of hand. And it looks like we're going to have coincidental minors as our officials are going to chase one from each squad from Marinick it'll be Sam Rubensall number 12 a senior and for Rye number 19 Jerome Kenny incidentally our uh, two game officials today we've got Steve Shamarzu and Tony Longaro Both of the penalties, two minutes for roughing. So now each team will be skating four aside with 524 left to go in this first period. Holmes and Darty. Darty wins the draw, comes out to center ice. George Piscalis. Interesting story in, his, in, in himself we'll get to. Piscalis across the red line, lets it fly, glove save. Kelly leaves it off. Josh John. John around the boards. Doherty up with it. Rink wide pass, a little too far for Ja Friedman. Friedman plays it off the boards. Greg Zegers intercepts, looking for Bobby Holmes. Streaks down the right side, cuts out in front, saving a beauty by Kelly. Ja Friedman now. It's a one on two. Crosses into the right zone, dumps it, and gives it right to Keith Collins. Beautiful lead pass for Holmes. Great move to the blue line. Fires kicked out again by Kelly. Lance Kelly really doing a job on Bobby Holmes. Four and a half to go, first period. Collins drives one. Kelly's got to make another save. Boy, the shots on goal are indeed going to be in favor of Rye at the end of this first period. Zegras, fans on the puck, now able to get it back up. And it'll be taken by Holmes. Holmes had six goals against St. John's this year. There's a nice wrist shot by Keith Collins and a glove save made by Lance Kelly. And he holds it for the whistle. And each team will change up. We'll have a face-off to the left-hand side of the junior goaltender, Lance Kelly. Incidentally, in the last meeting between these two, uh, Rye defeated Mamarinick. Uh, Lance Kelly, according to his head coach, Mike Chivarelli, made some uh, tremendous saves against Bobby Holmes. There you see the shots on goal, 11 to 3. Holmes, centering pass, Haggerty can't control it. And it, Craig Seekers can't keep it in the zone, dumps it back in at the late offside call. All that means is if Rye touches the puck before it clears the blue line, there will be a whistle to stop play. But they get it out before Rye touches it. We've got 17 seconds left on the coincidental minors. Each team skating one shy, and there's an icing call. And we're going to bring it all the way down to the other end. 3.35 left. 
big crowd here at the Playland Ice Casino on a cold, cold night. There's Mike Schiaparelli, head coach and former player for the Mamaroneck Tigers. He's having a pretty good season. He had a very big win against White Plains here last week at Playland, uh, defeating the Tigers 7-5 to five and getting ready for tonight's counter. Zegras at the blue line, lets it fly. Good save by Kelly, just able to kick it away. By Kelly really keeping the Tigers in this one. They have had virtually a non-existent offense in the first 15 minutes. Penalties are over, teams now skating five aside. Tommy Holmes across the blue line, wheels inside, shot just goes wide. Haggerty looks to center, still has the puck, backhander, Kelly with a save, he holds on. And again, some pushing and shoving. And we got ourselves a little draw. Just a little one. There is no love loss between these two. See Andy Levine, number three, in the middle of it. Greg Segris, along with Darty, for Mamaronek. Now, uh, fighting is not really permitted here. So, uh, an interesting call upcoming by our officials. to see exactly how they would sort this one out. Already, Jeff Starpoli, number 17, is in the penalty box for the Rye Garnets. And uh, now, we're having a quick discussion as uh, you get a unique look from behind the bench. Jim really talking with the officials. Also, now for Mamaronek is uh, number nine, Jimmy Isaacson, the junior. been able to hear him say he was just taking the man out of the crease. Star Poli with a little pushing and shoving get the matter started. Well, he got himself a game misconduct. And a two-minute penalty for roughing to Jimmy Isaacson. So uh, if I heard correctly, Starpoli will be out of the game receiving a game misconduct for instigating the mini fight. And now the official talking to the two captains, for Rye and Mamaronek, explaining to them the situation. So a five minute penalty also assessed against Rye. Starpoli, uh, a five minute fighting penalty, a five minute major, and then the game misconduct. So uh, they will have to have somebody in there to serve that five minutes. And if Mamaronek should score a goal, uh, that player will not be able to come out of the penalty box. Mamaronek, however, they have uh, one player in. Ryan Haggerty, or pardon me, uh, Jimmy Isaacson, he is in. Two-minute roughing penalty. So uh, this is indeed going to go in favor of Mamaronek. Golden opportunity for them with 3.06 left to play in the first period. The discussion continues down along the benches. Now uh, John Zegras starting to get uh, an earful. So I think they've uh, just about had everything all sorted out. Starpoli out of the ball game. He will not be able to return. Uh, they will have to put somebody else in the penalty box to uh, serve that five-minute major. And uh, it will have to be somebody who was on the ice at the time. And uh, he will come into the penalty box. So Mamaronek and Rye will be skating four aside. But after two minutes, Mamaronek will have a power play for the next three minutes. 2-0 is our score. Goals by Keith Collins and Ryan Haggerty early on in this first period, giving Rye the quick advantage. And uh, in the penalty box for Rye will be Eric Boot Bootke, a freshman, and he will serve the five-minute major. Starpoli out of the game with the game misconduct. 
Just under three minutes to go here in the first period. It has been all right, except for this last exchange. But right now, each team skating for a side. Greg Ziegers with the puck. Looks to clear. Rink wide pass. Off of the boards. Keith Collins streaking it on his backhand. Kicked away by Kelly. Kelly again with the save. And uh, this time, the net. Bobby Holmes in there. Takes a check from Sam Rubensall. Net comes off of its moorings. And we'll stop play once again with the save by Kelly. And we've got 235. There you look at Lance Kelly coming up with another save. You take a look at the speed and uh, some pretty good stick handling mark right there. That's an excellent shot, but way off the mark. Uh, Kelly uh, went down to make the save. Uh, better safe than sorry, as always. So face off now to the left-hand side of Lance Kelly. 235 left to go first period. at 4-1 and one in Division A play. Mamaronek at 5-2. and two. And with the extra win, as you saw in our pregame show, that puts Mamaronek on top in points over Rye. The one loss suffered by the Garnets in League play to the Suffering Mounties. And uh, I believe we've got another penalty. now in the penalty box a 10 minute unsportsmanlike penalty so um, Ameren or Rye will be without his services for the remainder of this period and a very large chunk of period number two so we still have four skaters uh, the team not penalized on the ice for that penalty. Zegers just the only one penalized. Kelly with an easy save, steers it to the corner. And the puck comes around to Josh John. Brings it around the boards. Darty sends it back the other way. This time it'll be picked up by John Ronan. Ronan behind him. Tigers continue to play with the puck in their own end. Good steal. Collins comes out to the point. Home shot goes wide. 210 left to go. 101 remaining in the Mamaronek penalty. 358 in the Rye penalty. Out in front, Kelly with the save. Steers it to the corner. And Rye's going to go again. We've got another penalty. This time a hooking call against Ryan Haggerty. Ryan Haggerty, number nine, will head to the box, and this is why does a nice job getting that stick right out in front and just rides him right down to the ice. So that is a two-minute penalty. And now the Tigers with a golden opportunity. 46 seconds left in their penalty. They're now skating four against three in a minute. They'll be five against three. Joff Friedman in the corner. Holmes riding him. Does a great job stick checking. Clearing pass. Intercepted. Keith Collins. Two home. Takes the slap shot, drives out inside, and his edge comes out from underneath him. Collins picks it up, and he is double teamed along the board. Back to Collins in the corner. Still has the puck. Again, double team. And now we'll have another penalty. This one will go against the Tigers for an elbow. Job Friedman, number 11, and not a good penalty there for the Tigers to take at that moment. They were 16 seconds away from having a two-man advantage. And now in 16 seconds, they will remain one up. We have 3.16 left in the penalty to Ryan Haggerty. We've got a minute 30 left in the penalty. That went against Jeff Starpoli. But he also received a game misconduct. A drive. Oh, what a save by Kelly. With the glove hand off of the blast by George Fiscalis, number 11. And if that name a familiar one to you, this uh, team uh, features three players from Ryan Eck High School. And this gentleman 
coming off of the broken ankle that you saw he suffered on cable three. What a beautiful save by Kelly off of the blast by Piscalis. Here come the Tigers the other way. Josh John ridden off the play by Holmes. Doherty still with the puck. Circles around, tries to drive it in on the backhand. It's no good. Kicked away by Suriano. Holmes. Penalty, Mamaronik's penalty, one penalty is now over. And they have the one-man advantage. 50 seconds left in a wild and woolly first period. Ryan leading 2-0. Dennis Doherty, senior captain, comes to center ice. Don Foul. Foul across the blue line. Good drop pass. Doherty lost it off his stick. Keith Collins tries to retrieve and does and sends it the length of the ice. 30 seconds left in the period. 104 left in the Mamaronek penalty. 29 seconds left in the first penalty for Mamaron or for Rye. Holmes in front to Collins. Back to Holmes, he scores! Oh, what a beautiful assist. Keith Collins just held on to that puck after he got it back from Holmes. And Kelly completely fooled on the play, went out to take Collins and let left Holmes wide open. And Bobby Holmes now with his 34th goal of the year. He now with a total of 70 points this season in 15 plus games for the Rye Garnets. It's three nothing Rye. George Piscalis, that incidentally a shorthanded goal. Collins, wrist shot, Kelly makes the save, and he'll dump it off into the corner as the period comes to an end. And a very exciting period, but as we mentioned, most of it played in the Mamaronek end, and Mike Ciparelli will take this break in between periods to see a little more offense from his club. We'll hold things up here at the end of one at the Playland Ice Casino. It is the Rye Garnets three and the Mamaronek Tigers nothing. And we'll return with a look at the shots on goal and period number two in just a moment. Favor of Rye. And that means that the majority of the action taking place in and in front of goaltender Lance Kelly. He has made some tremendous saves. Believe me, this game could be way out of hand by now if it wasn't for his play in between the pipes. But uh, the Garnets able to light the light three times in that first period. Giving you uh, some unique looks at high school hockey, uh, as you see Mike Schiaparelli. Hopefully a little later on, we'll be over in the Rye bench and uh, get some close-ups of John Zegras as he works with his team. So we're ready to start period number two. Mamaronek with four skaters, Rye has three. We've got five seconds left in one of the Rye penalties, but the Garnets come right back out. Holmes again taken out of the play. Boy, he is really a marked man, this time Dennis Doherty. Here comes Josh John. He'll dump it into the corner. Suriano clears it aside. Holmes comes up with it. Tries to ring it around the boards. Comes up a little short. Ryan Haggerty down there along with Jimmy Isaacson. And Haggerty and Isaacson tie each other up. And again, a little pushing and shoving. And we'll hold play up once again. 14-31 remaining to play in the second period. 3-0. Ryan on top. And Mamaronek still looking to generate a little offense. It's been virtually non-existent. Only four shots on goal in that first period. Pass in the center of the ice. Picked up by Keith Collins. Collins ridden off the play by Josh John. Able to center it, but it's knocked away. Mamaronek penalty is now over, but we're going to have to send somebody else into the penalty box. Another whistle, and this one will go against the Tigers. Josh John, just that quickly, will go into the box. He will get two minutes for holding. Here you look at John Zegras and the Rye Garnets, number 10 in the state. So Josh John in, two minutes for holding. 
Rye still with uh, 115 remaining on the five minute major to Jeff Starpoli. And in a minute and eight seconds, they will have a man advantage. Right now, both teams with four skaters aside. Darty at the blue line, leaves it off. Jimmy Isaacson, the drive goes wide. Comes all the way out to the point. Friedman able to keep it in. Darty looks to center, does. Stick the side by Haggerty. Holmes, lead pass. Collins has it. He's onside against Kelly. Shoots it wide. Good play by Lance Kelly. Cut down the angle. Comes out to the point. Piscalis with a shot. That's kicked out. Haggerty out in front to Holmes. He can't get it on his stick. Darty looks to break it away. It's a two on one. Comes cross ice. Josh Freeman goes in the corner with Holmes. Holmes rides him off the play. Darty behind the net. Kicks it back to the near side. Friedman, centering pass, skipped away. Knocked out there by Piscalis. Now here comes Ryan Haggerty. Has Collins in the middle. Ridden off the play nicely by Darty. Good job of stick checking. Dan Fowl loses the puck. Holmes comes up with it. Good lead pass to Collins. Another breakaway. Shot, and that just goes wide. Kelly got a little stick on that one. So two straight times, Collins is denied. Now the Garnets with the man advantage. Puck in center ice. Collins crosses the blue line. Centering pass. Haggerty has it. Falls down, and the puck finally clear. Sam Rubensaw puts it into the corner. Rubensaw looks to clear. Holmes has it. Centering pass, and that skips off of the stick of Ryan Haggerty. Tommy Holmes has it poked away. Don Foul on the breakaway. of a nuisance so that Don Fowl could not get off the strong backhand and that meant an easy save for Keith Suriano. Take another look at it here and you can see why Bobby Holmes is getting a lot of ink. What a great individual play there and uh, because of that it uh, it looked like it forced Fowl to change from the wrist shot to the backhand and uh, by the time he got it on his stick he was past the net and Suriano made the easy stop along the side of the cage. Stops the clock now with 12.27 to go. Five seconds left in the Mamaronek penalty to Josh John. Oh, that one just went past. Suriano never saw it. A very soft slap shot. Penalty is over. Teams are finally even. In the center, wrist shot, glove save. Puck loose out in front, it's kicked away, and the net is moved. So again, they will stop play. Reset the net, and we're going to take another look at that last play. Here comes Holmes. He's got two wingers, but takes it himself. A rising wrist shot. There you see Kelly gets the glove on it, but then has no idea where the rebound is. Loose out in front, and finally it was cleared away, and Holmes slid into the net. So Mamaronek still trying to get some offense. 19 is Michael Ray. Puck goes into the rise zone. All penalties are over. Each team skating for a side. Collins able to get it out of the zone. Ted Haley. Centering pass. Rye looking to bring it back into the Mamaronic zone. It's cleared back out to center ice. Cameron Fowl, lead pass for Scott Spires. Spires taken out of the play nicely by Andy Levine. Holmes slaps it around the boards. Comes up to Jeremy Killer. Keller battling there with Sam Rubensall. Puck finally comes out to Holmes. And Andy Levine retreats behind his net. Pass intercepted. Rubensall comes out to the point. Jimmy Isaacson lets it fly, knocked down in front. John Mazzola got a skate on it. Puck out to center ice. Jeremy Keller, he looks a little winded. He's going to come back to the bench. Ryle try to change up on the fly if they can. Puck gets in by Keith Collins. Tries to go behind the back. Bobby Holmes in the middle. Backhander intercepted Rubensall. Centering pass. Spires tries to give it back to Rubensall. He's on side. Wrist shot, fires, saves Soriano, and he covers up and holds on. 
10.46 left to go here in the second period. It is Rye 3, Mamaronik nothing. How long have you got, Jeff? Leading scorer for the Mamaronik Tigers coming into tonight's game is number 11, Joff Friedman, who's out on the ice right now. He'll be playing right wing on this line. He has 17 goals, 14 assists for a total of 31 points. Bobby Holmes for the Garnets, their leading scorer. Players written down, no whistle. Puck loose in the corner, finally comes out, and will be tracked down by Ryan Haggerty. Two on two, Haggerty to Tommy Holmes. Holmes across the blue line. Goes through the backhand, centering pass. Haggerty couldn't tip it in. Joff Friedman couldn't hold it. Holmes still has it, we've got another whistle. And we're gonna have another penalty, and this one's going against the Garnets. This will be an interference call against Jerome Kenny, number 19, as he pleads his case to the penalty box. And we all know how much good that does you. So he will go into the box for two minutes, and again, Mamaronik will be on the power play. 10-21 left to go, second period. All three of Rye's goals coming here, coming in the first. Well, the Tigers looking to get something started offensively. Play of Lance Kelly in the net has been spectacular. Or this game would have been over early. Here come the Tigers trying to break it out. Jimmy Isaacson at center ice. Across the blue line, dumps it off. Friedman to the other blue line, just getting it on side. Dennis Darty skates in. Puck sticked away from him by Holmes. Holmes tries to get it on his stick, and it is finally cleared. And now Holmes racing ahead of the field against Josh King. Holmes in front, he's written out of the play, and we're gonna have a penalty. This should be a holding call against Josh John. And once again, the Tigers will lose that man advantage. Here's Holmes. As he tries to duck in, there you see the mugging right in front of the net. No question about that call. So for holding, the Garnets, they will have a penalty, a uh, man advantage, power play for 40 seconds in a minute 20. Puck comes out to the point. George Piscalis to the point. Holmes drive, that's just kicked out by Kelly. He has made some great saves. Keith Collins intercepts. Piscalis at the point, lets it fly, and it just goes wide. Haggerty in front looking for the tip in. Holmes can't push it back into the corner. Each team skating for a side. That one comes out to center ice. Marinick has a two-on-one. Scott Spires to Rubensaw. And Keith Collins, or uh, George Piscalis comes back to break up that play. Piscalis to Holmes. Holmes, Collins, shot high up over the net. Ryan Haggerty behind the net. Collins, good stick handling. Looks to center, puck knocked down by Spires. Collins kicks it. Haggerty comes out to the point. Piscalis, rink wide. Centering is just wide. Bobby Holmes looking for Collins, and Piscalis can't keep it in the zone. And Bobby Holmes retreats into his own end. 8.36 remaining in the second period. 50 seconds remaining in the Rye penalty, or pardon me, in the Mamaronic penalty. Now only five seconds left in the Rye penalty. The Rye penalty is now over, so the Garnets with a man advantage. Ryan Haggerty comes to the point. Piscalis centers, knocked away. Comes out to Doherty. Doherty with Piscalis riding on him, and he is going to go. And he touches the puck, the whistle blows. And we're going to send some more folks into the penalty box. George Piscalis, number 11. He will go in for two minutes for the haul. He just kind of grabs him and forces him down to the ice. And that's two minutes. So there are 23 seconds left in the penalty to Josh John. And the Meredith will once again go on the power play. Talking
talking about Piscalis uh, played for the Rynek football team as a halfback quarterback. Broke his ankle uh, rather severely in a game on cable three against Tuckahoe. Was out for the season. Here's a drive that uh, just kicked wide. Jimmy Isaacson with a pretty good shot. In the corner, Joff Freeman looking to center it. Kicked away by Suriana. Tommy Holmes up with it. Lead pass, Keith Collins. Collins flying down the right wing. And Kelly almost faked out, but able to hold his ground just long enough to make the save. Not a very hard shot by Keith Collins, who has 23 goals this season. And again, the net moves. A lot of people want to know why don't they put some sort of pins in there to make sure that net stays in there. Well, the reason is because too many injuries occur when uh, that net is that immovable. Kelly with another good save. The Maronick penalty is over. The Tigers now with a power play, but Rye still with the puck. Holmes wheeling around, gets it out of the zone, comes over to Bobby Holmes. Holmes waits for his club to get onside, now lets it fire, and Kelly has to go down to make another save. David Singer, Holmes with the intercept. Lead pass, Collins, just shot it wide. Tried to go on the far side, he got Kelly to go down. Jimmy Isaacson, he lost it on a nice chick check by Collins. Keith Collins doing a whale of a job in the corners. Comes out, Haggerty fires, kicked out again, this time by Kelly, and Doherty right there to cover up on the rebound. The Tigers breaking out, they've got a three on two. Doherty, still with a puck, puts on the brakes. Wrist shot is blocked by Holmes, retrieved by Don Foul. Foul to Doherty, back to Foul. Comes out to the point, David Singer, cross ice, John Ronan. Ronan goes down low to Doherty. And has the puck sticked away by Holmes. Now sends it back into the corner. 27 seconds left in the Rye penalty. Circling around, Joff Friedman. Centering pass, no one there. Holmes able to clear. 13 seconds left in the Mamaronek power play. 6.14 to go, second period. Rye leading 3-0. Tigers with the puck. Behind the net. Holmes chases it down. Freeman right on hand. Brings him down. No whistle. Freeman up with it. Tries to center. Gets another shot. Puck just goes wide. Freeman almost had two shots at it to knock it in. Holmes up with the puck. Rink wide pass. Intercepted. That's a delayed offside call. The Garnets will bring it out of the zone. Holmes across the blue line. Lifts it fly. That off of the skate. And Kelly right there to cover up and hold for the faceoff. John Ronan coming back on defense. Got his skate in front of that shot by Holmes. And that delayed it enough so that Kelly could make the save. Jeff Hanley's at the ball game today. Where, where else would he be but here at Playland? There's the shots on goal here in the second period. Rye 8, Mamaronek 6, a little more even. We were at 21 to 4 at the end of the first period. Holmes tries to get the puck. Haggerty up with it. The centering pass, no one there. Puck retrieved by Kevin Grippenberg, number 16, his first shift on the ice. Jeff Rita got a new line out here now for the Mamaronek Tigers. Mike Schiaparelli trying any combination to see if he can get something going offensively. He's gotten six shots on goal in this period. Has come close twice to getting into his, the net, but his club still trails 3-0. Buck loose out in center. Jerome Kenny knocks it back in. Kelly makes the easy save. Haggerty in there. He's really ridden off the play by Ted Haley. Jerome Kenny out in front. Haggerty just shot it wide. Holmes looks to center. Mamaronek does. <laughs> Kelly has to jump right on it to cover up for the save. Whistle stops play with 4.52 left to go in period number two. Coming up uh, in between periods two and three, we're going to have a feature on uh, the man of the season for the Rye Garnets, number 12, Bobby Holmes, as you get a look at Lance Kelly, the junior goalie for Mamaronek. Uh, Bobby Holmes, we mentioned, uh, set a Westchester record scoring six goals here at Playland against St. John's. He leads
leads the club in scoring. 33 goals, 35 assists. Wrist shot by Collins, knocked down. By Kelly again. Boy, is he going to sleep good tonight. That one off of the stick of Don Fowl goes in the corner. Greg Segrist is back after serving his 10-minute misconduct, and we're going to have a charging call. This will go against the Tigers. It'll be number 20, Dennis Doherty. And did he take a run at Collins? That charging call, incidentally, you're allowed one stride to hit a man, but if you take any more than that, the uh, official ruling is that you're just trying to tee up on that guy. So charging, two-minute penalty, and Rye will go on the power play. So again, as we mentioned, uh, Holmes will be our feature piece coming up in between periods two and three. In the interesting case, there have been a number of Holmes all of his brothers who have played for John Segrist or others here at Rye High School. This is the latest in a great tradition of Holmes hockey players. Segrist behind his own net. Under four and a half minutes to go. Lead pass, comes off of the skate of Holmes, able to get it back. And that one cleared back to center ice. George Piscalis to Greg Segrist. Segrist skating in. Tries to split the defense, comes right in front. Kelly makes the save, and again, holds on for a stoppage in play. Stops the clock with 4.01 left to go. Should tell you also, uh, we plan on returning here to the Playland Ice Casino at the last weekend of February for the two Section 1 championships. The Division B Open and the Division A Championship. We we'll hope you'll check the program guide for that one. Zegras from the point. Drive just goes wide. Kelly got a glove on it. Keith Collins. Out to the point. Piscalis. Has the puck taken away. Remember, this is a power play for Rhyme. A Marinix penalty. A minute 10 left to run. Zegras looking for Holmes. Stick to side. Scott Spires. And he is driven out of the play. And again, it comes to center ice. Ted Haley. Holmes intercepts. Gives to Tommy Holmes. Across the blue line. Has Collins on the wing with him. Holmes to Collins. Back out to the point, And nobody there. Pascalis retreats. Picks it up. Somebody playing without their fluff right now that's lying in center ice. Here comes Piscalis, looking for Collins. Puck knocked away. Rye still able to keep it in the zone. Holmes, two home. Centering pass, Collins fired it wide. 20 seconds left in the Mamaronic penalty. Puck loose in the corner, almost had a centering play. Mamaronic looking to break out. Finally get control of the puck. Jimmy Isaacson in center right. Sends it into the Mamaronic zone. The Tigers looking to change. Holmes with a good lead pass. Drinking in front. Shoots. They'll give him the goal. Holmes made the play and then went crashing into Lance Kelly. Here's another look at it. coming flying in all by himself and he'll just let the shot go but great concentration look at that as he's falling down and there you can see in between the pads of Kelly and then Holmes flew right into Kelly and that is his second goal of the game Bobby Holmes assist from George Piscalis it is now 4-0. In favor of Rye. Tommy Holmes behind the net. Dennis Doherty will retrieve number 20. Sends a rink-wide pass. Chopped down by Don Fowl. But he has ridden off the play. And the puck taken away by Andy Levine. Skipped in the zone by Josh John. Number 8. Tries to kick it down. Now he is double-teamed. Like 
Josh John is also going to go in as well. Here's that play along the boards. Puck's still loose. You can see it uh, in the screen, and it's the referee, as long as he can see it, he will not blow the whistle, and that has a tendency to uh, get the tempers up just a bit. Now we are going to have uh, two penalties, but Rye is going to be hit with a four-minute. We've got a double minor coming up against Rye, and Jerome Kenny will get the ball from Al Cross. penalty and a two-minute unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Jerome Kenny, and we've got a two-minute roughing call against Mamaronik's Josh John. So each team will be skating for a sign at least for the next two minutes, and that's exactly how much we have left in this second period. Another good lead pass, Bobby Holmes to Keith Collins. for Haggerty scores! Ryan Haggerty, his second goal of the day, off a beautiful tip-in on a pass set up by Keith Collins. This is just a spectacular play. Here comes Collins. Now, of course, Kelly, he has all of his attention on Collins. You thought the play was over there as soon as the puck came off of his stick, but he just wheels around, and a, just a tremendous centering pass, and right there, to knock that one in, Ryan Haggerty, just a freshman, and he now with 24 goals on the season. That one just goes wide. Haggerty again. Holmes able to keep it in the zone. Haggerty out in front. Centering pass. That one just wide by Collins. Boy, that's three times he's missed on the doorstep. Holmes keeps it in, but the net is been dislodged. And once again, we'll have another stoppage of play. There you see the last try scoring, number nine, Ryan Haggerty, his second goal of the day. And the assist, Bobby Holmes, his second assist, and Keith Collins, who has two assists as well. 125 left. Holmes to Greg Segrist, left alone, lets it fly, that's why. Holmes tracks down the rebound, he fires one, and that one goes all the way up on the shelf and will end up in Rye territory. Out to center ice, Haggerty. Leaves it off the board, Segrist. Last minute of play in the period. Segrist. Haggerty, on his backhand, he scores! The hat trick for the freshman. He has three goals and an assist in this game, and Rye has exploded. They now lead 6-0. Another great individual effort by Haggerty. Pulls it to his backhand. Kelly's way out of position. And even though the glove hand stretched out as far as he could, unable to snare it. And the Garnets are cruising. They lead 6-0. 55 seconds to go. There's the last scoring summary. Ryan Haggerty from Greg Zegras. Zegras with his first point of the night. Dennis Doherty now for the Tigers. He's out in front, falling down. Shot goes wide. Retrieved by Friedman. Comes out to the point. Jimmy Isaacson. Tap in try by Doherty. Goes wide. His shot bounces off of the net. In the corner. Holmes knocked down. No whistle. Holmes right back up to pick it away. And he's going to lead a three on two. Holmes to Collins. Collins lets it fly. Kelly off of the glove. Comes out in front. And again the net comes loose. And again they will hold up play with just 23 seconds left to go in the second period. Rye six and Lamarinick nothing. Collins with a goal. 
Zegras. Collins, good give and go. Back to Zegras, and he's taken out of the play smartly by Job Freeman. Centering pass, Haggerty couldn't come up with it. Comes to Bobby Holmes. Zegras again open, lets it fly, kicked aside by Kelly. Holmes will get a shot. He's ridden off the play. And the puck comes out to center ice. And that's going to do it for the second period, ending in a flourish by Rye. A couple of tries, but Lance Kelly once again equal to the task for that moment only. At the end of two periods of play here at the Playland Ice Casino in Rye, New York, it is the Rye Garnet Six, the Mamaronic Tigers nothing. And in just a moment, when we return after this break, we'll have our special feature on Bobby Holmes and then period number three on this Cable 3 Sports Special. Six. Uh, there are two divisions in uh, the B set. You've got uh, B1 and B2 in B1. The uh, Pelham Pelicans uh, taking over first place uh, by virtue of that win today over Sleepy Hollow. They now with 10 points and lead Woodlands by one. A lot of people looking for a Woodlands Pelham championship in the B open set in the section one crown here at Playland. Osning uh, is next with a 3-2 and one mark. Uh, some uh, very disgruntled fans and we're assuming they're Mamaronic supporters, though that is putting it uh, rather cheaply, uh, came over and just started to beat on the two referees. I'm not kidding you. Uh, right along the penalty box area, uh, two fans came out of nowhere. Actually, three fans came out of nowhere and uh, started to lay some heavy uh, fists on uh, the two officials. And right now, uh, those officials are receiving some uh, medical attention and at the same time uh, making some statements to the police department, the uh, Westchester County Special Police, uh, who are based right here at Playland. And uh, as we look across the way, we see them now coming out of their dressing room. So the officials will be joining us momentarily on the ice. And as soon as that happens, we'll be ready to start period number three. Um, it really was quite an ugly scene. Um, I, you, we say we mentioned it as Rye uh, or Mamaronic supporters. We're not sure, and uh, we don't want to lay blame on anybody at this juncture, but uh, in any event, whoever they were, uh, just an, a very, very ugly scene. And uh, our, our congratulations and a tip of the hat to the two officials who uh, are going to come out and finish this game, Steve Shimarzo and Tony Longio. And uh, I'm not kidding you, they, uh, they were being uh, hit from on top, from on bottom, sucker punched, uh, guys coming over the glass, uh, hiding behind people, and uh, just uh, trying to uh, vent their frustration and anger in a most inappropriate way. And uh, our, uh, our congratulations to, to, to those two men who uh, really uh, work by the spirit that the game is for the kids and uh, nothing is going to stop them from completing this game no matter what the ugly circumstances are. So um, we're going to, uh, they're right now going to take a couple of shots. As a matter of fact, we've got a new goaltender coming in for Mamaronic. It's going to be number one, John Doppelide. Uh He is a senior goalie, and uh, he's going to come in for Lance Kelly, who gave up the six goals in the two periods. But let me tell you, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, he made some tremendous saves in that first and second period, and uh, they may be just taking him out for his help and uh, no injuries uh, anymore. He uh, was being pounded on. Players were skating into him uh, through the first two periods. And uh, we hope, or I'm sure he's all right. We hope he's just earned himself quite a rest. He did a fantastic job, but gave up those six goals. There you see the new goalie, uh, as we mentioned, number one, John Dapolini. So now we get uh, some clarification that uh, those combatants uh, against our officials, uh, some some friends of uh, Jeff Starpoli was thrown out of the game uh, earlier in the second period uh, for unsportsmanlike got a game misconduct, and uh, supposedly that's that's what we hear right now. Uh, of course, uh, completely unofficial, and uh, hopefully this situation will never happen again. But we're about set to go, and uh, now the uh, two officials have uh, the captains at center ice, and uh, I'm sure they're going to try to grab a hold of this game before it gets out of hand. A lot of times uh, this has a, a habit of transgressing to the players, 
And if that does, uh, there was some extracurricular activity already in this game. And uh, hopefully uh, we won't see any more of that and uh, we'll be treated to some excellent hockey the remainder 15 minutes as we saw in the first 30 minutes of this game. So the team's coming out onto the ice. 15 minutes left to go. It is 6 nothing in favor of the Rye Garnets. And uh, Rye is going to have number 19, Jerome Kenny, in the box to begin this period with a two-minute penalty. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what the call is unless uh, they're going to penalize him for that brawl. Uh, we'll hopefully get an official word from uh, Al Cross, uh, the so-called commissioner of the Westchester Interscholastic Ice Hockey League. The right begins right away. Here's Keith Collins, first drive, and that is high up over the glass and into the crowd. So welcome to the ball game, John Dopoletti. The senior goalie gets his first look. Bobby Hall, or Keith Collins, rather. And uh, now we're uh, getting into a situation where the fans are starting to throw objects onto the ice, and uh, that, of course, could be most dangerous, and you really hate to see this. Uh, it really is only a game. Nobody's going to lose a job or, or die off of this. Here's a good save by Doppelady off of the shot by Holmes. We hope the fans will be able to control themselves. Zegras with the steal, tried to feed Collins a little bit too far behind him. Centering pass by Holmes off of the skate of Doppelady, and this one will rink around the boards. And Mamaric will try to break it out. They're on the power play, five against four. Dennis Darty, number 20, down along the left wing. Tries to cut in front, tries to slip it in, and a pad save, and it goes behind the net. Craig Segris comes out with it, and he leaves it up for Keith Collins. Can't control, it'll be taken by Joff Friedman. Friedman backhand, loose in center ice. Segris up with it. He lost the puck, Holmes dumps it back into the Mamarin again. Puck loose out in front. Finally retrieved. Friedman, good centering pass. Don Powell leaves it off for Darty. Puts on the brakes. One deep, and it's stick checked away by Zegers. Keith Collins, across the blue line, leaves it for Hall. Let's it fly, kicked away. Napoletti with a good save. His third of the period. Loose. Collins up with it. Looking to center Holmes. Wide open. Doppelotti with a stick check. Knocked that puck away. Holmes all by himself on the doorstep. This is the Mamaronic power play, which has 25 seconds to run, though it has been all right. Sam Rubensall dumps it into the rye zone. Suarino clears it out. Center ice. Rubens off. Five seconds left in the penalty. Knocked down by the official right at the blue line. George Piscalis takes care of Friedman. Penalty is over. Teams at full strength. Collins for Holmes. Centering pass. Jerome Kenny couldn't keep it on his stick. Now goes into the corner. It's bumped there by Friedman. Holmes leaves it at the point. Segris finally gets a handle. Into the corner, Collins looking for Holmes in front. Puck sticked away, comes out to Zegers with the point. Off the board. Zegers able to keep it in play. Still loose in front, Napolite able to clear. Comes to center ice. Picked up by Collins. And rise off sides. Jerome Kenny still trapped in the zone, and the puck came across. And we'll have a stoppage of play with 12.15 left to go in this third period. It remains Rye 6 and Mamaronic nothing. Shots on goal so far in this third period. Rye again, which has had the heavy advantage throughout. They're now 5-1. And we played uh, just about three minutes here in the third period. That has been all Rye in this one. This may uh, go down to be one of the great Rye teams in section one and in New York State, a lot of folks feel they have a legitimate claim for a number one ranking in New York State, though they're going to have to take care of Albany Academy next week. And then uh, a little later down the road, these suffering Mounties. And of 
course, the Section 1 Championships here at Playland, followed by the state tournament. Ryan Haggerty, with three goals already, tries for his fourth, it's kicked away. Comes out to the point. Nick Adams, just an eighth grader, and we're gonna have a tripping call coming up. As Nick Adams, right defenseman, and just an eighth grader is gonna go into the penalty box for two minutes for tripping. So again, the Marinick will be on the power play with 11.25 remaining to go in this third period. I'm John Caridio along with the Cable 3 sports team. Happy to be here at Playland. It's nice to be outside, inside, so it's so cold outside. Here's that last call again. See, just on the edge of the screen, and uh, going down Jeff Farida like a ton of bricks, so. Nick Adams in the penalty box, two minutes for tripping. It's a shot, and save made there by Keith Suarino, number 31, junior goaltender. Four and one in league play, coming into tonight's action, looking for the shutout. Holmes kicks it back to Piscalis. Garnett's content to chop off some time on the penalty clock and on the game clock, which now is at 11.05. 1.36 left to go in the Rye penalty. John Friedman skates out of the zone. Comes up ice, Rubensall. Centering pass picked off by Piscalis, and he sends it the length of the ice. Dennis Doherty back behind his own net, chased there by Keith Collins. Collins, stick checking from behind. Pass goes into the zone. Behind the net, Zegers trying to chase it down. Also there, Don Foul. Zegers gets to it first, and the puck comes loose. Holmes and Collins, a two-on-one. Holmes tried to feed it to Collins. Good stick check there by Jimmy Isaacson. Collins tries to come out to the point. Pascal is not there. He's at center ice. So he'll retreat, wait for the Gardens to get back on side. 49 seconds left in the Rye penalty to Adams. 10-15 left to go in the game. Friedman lifts it up into center ice. Zegers clears. Collins across the blue line. Has Holmes in the center, leaves it for him, shot is in! What a tandem goes to our Keith Collins and Bobby Holmes. Holmes now with the hat trick, Collins with the assist hat trick. He's got three of those, and it is now Rye 7 and Marinick nothing. Collins knew Holmes was there all alone, and uh, kind of like a Larry Bird touch pass, just uh, Got it on his stick and quickly wristed past John Dopolini. And it is now I-7, Amaranek nothing. Three goals and two assists for Bobby Holmes. He now with 73 points on the season. Keith Collins, three assists and a goal. That gives him 62 points this year as the Rye juggernaut continues to roll along. Zegris flips it up into the Mamaronic end. 20 seconds, that again, 20 seconds left on the penalty. That was another shorthanded goal by the Garnets. Their second of the night. Haggerty fighting along the boards with Scotty Spires. Tommy Holmes to Zegris. He clears it down the length of the ice and the penalty is over. Teams are all even, five skaters aside, 9.25 remaining to play in the game. Ryan Haggerty dumps it behind the Mamaronic net. John Ronan for Spires, sticked away by Zegras. Gets it on his backhand, flips it in front, it just goes wide. And another whistle. And we've got a player in the crease. Tommy Holmes got tied up right inside of the net with John Ronan. And uh, that causes the whistle to stop play and uh, will bring it out outside of the blue line for the faceoff. Here's that last goal by Ryan, number 12. Bobby Holmes, his third goal of the night. Collins and Piscalis. George with his second assist of the evening. Zegers comes up ice. Jerome Kenny sends it back behind the Mamaronic line. Jimmy Isaacson tracks it down there. Puck loose in the corner. Ted Haley tries to clear. Now comes out to 
Number 16, Kevin Griffinberg. He loses it. Now George Fiscalis. Hitting continues to be fierce in this one. Comes loose out. Suarano cleared it out. And this is going to be an offsides call. Touched in there by number 22, Danny Huckheiser. And they're going to bring that face off back outside of the blue line once again. 9.26 left to go, third period. 7-0, Rye on top. In this hot rivalry that got even hotter in between periods. Purely academic at this point. Uh, the only question remains to see if Keith Suarino can come up with the show. with the puck in their own end. They've been there most of the game. That's an offside call. Bobby Holmes uh, tucked in behind the zone. So we'll stop play once again, have another face off. 9-13 left to play. Puck comes out to center ice. Dennis Doherty, captain for the Tigers, up with it. Eludes a check. One and not the second from Andy Levine. Joff Friedman trying to track it down. And Rye able to clear. That's going to be a nice. no icing call. Last touch by the Tigers. So they wave off the icing. Buck loose in center ice. Zegras has to wait for his teammates to get onside. They do. And he is pulled down. by our officials. They blow the whistle. And Rye will once again go on the power play with 9.26 remaining to play. We take another look. Very simple. Rye's been doing this and uh, Mamaronik's been forced to do this all night long. Just kind of riding on a hip, grab a good piece of the shoulder and uh, ride him to the ice. And uh, that's going to cost the Tigers two minutes. Josh John, number eight. Minutes for Trippett at 9.26. So the Garnets with the man advantage. Holmes, Zegras on the defense. Collins, the left wing, the center. John Mazzola, number six. Holmes trying to just a little touch pass inside. It was knocked down easily. Suarino leaves it behind the net. Holmes leaves it for Collins. Here comes Keith Collins. Can he motor? Collins, center ice, crosses the blue line. Leaves it for Holmes. Off the skate, drives, goes wide. Comes all the way out to the point. Zegras lets it fly. That's why. Chased down by Jimmy Isaacson. He's able to clear the zone. Zegras over to Holmes. Minute 26 left in the penalty. Zegras back to Holmes. Was down his head. Gets it across the blue line. Slips away from two checks. Tries to pick up the puck in the corner. Instead, it's retrieved by Ted Haley. Haley lost it, and this time, Jimmy Isaacson clears it the length of the ice. 105 left to go in the penalty. Puck intercepted. Spires, backhand save. Farino. Another shot. That's kicked away. Tigers able to keep it in. Well, this is an interesting set of circumstances. Uh, Mamarna getting their best offensive threat. And they are... Here's Collins. All alone. Scores! <laughs> Collins with his second goal. had three of these opportunities today. He finally connects on one. Getting the pass and scoring his second goal to go along with three assists. That makes it 8 nothing.
Now, uh, we've got a discussion going on down at our official scores. We understand we've had having some problems with the scoreboard clock here at Playland, which incidentally is brand spanking new, using it for the first season. And uh, we understand there is uh, six minutes left to play in the game. There you see the scoring summary, Keith Collins with his second goal of the game, the assist to Greg Zegers, his second assist of the day. So uh, what they have done, uh, they're going to uh, not use the new scoreboard, they'll go back to the old scoreboard. The one uh, that has been used here for years and years and years. Seven nothing, six minutes exactly left to play. Tough when you get the, you pay all that money for a brand new scoreboard and it don't work. So Rye, now we'll have a have trouble to uh, giving you if there are any more penalties, the time left of the penalties that uh, not kept on the old scoreboard. It's one of the nice features of the new scoreboard, but uh, we're gonna have to do away with that for the final 540 of the game. That'll be a delayed offside call. Ryan Haggerty bringing it back uh, into the blue line. Now, if Ryan touches the puck before Mamarinic clears it from the blue line, they'll uh, blow the whistle and stop play. Sent around the boards. Now they waved off the offsides. Haggerty gets it in front, gets it on his forehand, now driven out of the play. Centering pass, Tommy Holmes is there, still has it, circles behind the net, good stick check. Has it taken away, but Ryan Haggerty up with it. Comes out to the point, a drive, goes wide. Eric Bootke with his first attempt. Haggerty in the corner. Centering, Holmes, out in front, that goes wide. Jer Jeremy Keller. Tried to send one into the net, but we've got another penalty. And this one is going to go against the Mamaroneck Tigers. It'll be number 22, Danny Hockheiser. And uh, he is going to go into the box. Cross-checking, I believe, will be the call. With 4.54 left to go in the game. Checking indeed the call. Two minute penalty. Rye once again goes on the power play. 4.54 left to go in the game. It is 8 0. Rye on top. Centering pass almost knocked in by Jerome Kenny, and the Tigers able to clear it the length of the ice. Sam Rubensall sends it down. Suarino makes the easy stop. And the puck picked up by Andy Levine. Comes out in front. Greg Zegras up with it. Finally able to get it across the blue line. Rubensall waits for his team to get on side. Now sends it back in. Spires looking to chase it down, but Zegers will get to it first. Still has the puck. Comes out to Jerome Kenny. Kenny at center ice. Dumps it in. 4-12 left. Into the corner. Spires. Behind the net. Ridden off the play by Jerome Kenny. Spires clears it. And Suarino can't get a stick on it. Zegers will have to chase it down in the corner. Under four minutes to go. Rubens all had a shot at it, couldn't come up. Doherty fan on the rebound. Now the Garnets look to break out. Levine, his drive knocked down at the blue line. Isaacson. Doherty up with it in center ice. Across the blue line. Let's it fly. Gloves down and covered up by Suarino. And with the whistle, that'll stop play with 3.29 remaining to go. Remains Rye 8 and Mamaronic nothing. Packed house for this one. Always the case when Rye plays Mamaronic in hockey. They always get a full house. And uh, some fans' uh, tendency to go a little overboard in the rivalry. Hey, remember, it's that's entertainment. It's only entertainment. It's just a game. Holmes can't get the puck off the faceoff. Loose out in front. Shot kicked away. Serena with another beauty. Rebound attempt will not go. 
John Freeman couldn't get a stick on it. Here comes Bobby Holmes. He's got John Mazzola on the wing with him. Holmes centers it. Collins couldn't get a stick down. Collins up with it. Comes out to the point. Pascalis back to Collins. Wheels and deals. Right out in front. Shoots. That's why. Boy, Collins has had all kinds of chances tonight. 2.50 to go. Mamaronic penalty is now over. And the teams once again all even. Puck loose in the Mamaronic end. A drive is in! Don Fowl breaks the shutout bid of Keith Suarino. Boy, what a blast by Fowl. Take another look at it here. Foul with his 11th goal. He just gets this, tees it up, and lets it fly. Well, uh, Serino had a pretty good screen sitting in front of him as well. I don't believe uh, anybody touched it on his way in. But uh, Mamaronic with some sort of solace in this game as they avert the shutout. And with 2.38 left to go, it is now 8-1 in favor of the Garnets. Jeff Rita, Pascalis intercepts. Delayed offside's call. Pascalis still with the puck. Ridden off the play. Zegris centering pass. Collins up with it again. This time he has Holmes on the way. Collins shot. Out in front. Kicked away. Collins back up with it. Thought he was going to try to jam it in through the back door, but skates right out in front. Centering pass knocked aside, and that clears the zone. 2.05 left to go. Scalis to Zegras. Lead pass for Holmes. Knocked away. Rita. His pass intercepted by Zegras. Skating in. Gets to his backhand. Big check. Shot. He's in. Bobby Holmes. Bobby Holmes. A great individual effort just to get that puck away. And here comes Holmes just before Doppelady could get the puck in his glove. Bobby Holmes knocks it in. His fourth goal of the game. So Holmes with six points in tonight's action. Four goals and two assists. And uh, that not a happy man, Mike Schiaparelli, the head coach of the Mamaroneck Tigers. He knows uh, this has always been a tough game for him to win, but more times than not, uh, he has only lost by a goal or two when they come together. But uh, tonight, a different story. Holmes, his fourth from Pascalis and Zegras. Pascalis and Zegras both with three assists in the game. Minute and a half to go. Holmes, lead pass. Comes up, Jer Jeremy Keller. Keller on the wing. Drop pass, nobody there. Sam Rubensall drops it to Holmes. Zegras comes up with it. Has Ryan Haggerty on the wing. Zegras looks to split the defense. Is able to do so, but ridden into the corner and takes a hard hit inside there from John Ronan. Spires with the puck. Last minute of play in the game. Will improve to 11 and 5 overall, and in a tie for second place in Division A with Mamaronic behind Suffering. Holmes behind his own net, tracked down by Cameron Fowl, number 15. Ryan Haggerty up with it. Pascalis tries to clear. Puck still loose in the rye zone. Now Pascalis finally get a handle. Comes up to Tommy Holmes. Here comes the speedy Keith Collins. Leaves it for Tommy Holmes. Skates in front. Shoots and scores. One more look at it. This is an individual effort by Tommy Holmes. He had Segris in front. Decided to pass up on it. And right in between.
It is now 10 to 1 with just 21 seconds left to go. This will be a loss for Marinick. We'll have to remember for quite some time. Just completely outplayed tonight by the Rye Garnets. Rye doing everything right, even on the penalties. Uh, scoring two shorthanded goals in tonight's game. They've done just a little bit of everything. And mercifully for the Mimarinic Tigers, the buzzer finally sounds. So congratulations in order to goaltender Keith Suarino, number 31, who did give up the final goal, but uh, took care of everything else. And uh, also uh, for Mimarinic, Lance Kelly, who played the first two periods for the Tigers in goal, did an excellent job. Uh, left after two, trailing 6 nothing, but it could have been a lot worse. The scoring star for Ryan this game, none other than Bobby Holmes, the senior, four goals and two assists. For a total of six points, Ryan Haggerty also with the hat trick. He had three goals and assists. And Keith Collins with two goals and three assists. There's your final. Ryan defeating Mamaronek by a score of 10-1. to 1. In just a moment, we'll have our postgame show down by the rink. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to speak with Bobby Holmes and the winning coach, John Segris. So stay with us as we return to the Playland Ice Casino with more of this Cable 3 Sports Special. They're a lot closer than this uh, nine-goal bulge. Uh, I'm not sure how you feel about that. I I don't mind the score, but the Mariners a better high school team than what it was indicated tonight. If we ever have to meet them again in the sectional semifinals or finals, the score will be a lot closer. I don't think the score is any indication of a Mariners talent. And uh, hopefully we can meet again, and we look forward to it. All right, I asked you this uh, to get ready for our pregame. Let me ask you the same question now. Is this Rye hockey team playing up to their capability? They're playing their best hockey right now. Prior to the game, yes, but a kind of a game like this, John, it's very hard to put together what you try to do uh, the full season. It's an emotional game, so whatever you try to accomplish in a system base never really works. It's the talent that will shine out there, and our kids have some talent, so it's been Marinick, but we just say go at them and let the best team win. That's what we do. You got some good defense. You got some great goaltending. Not a whole lot of shots he had to deal with, but Serena played very well, I thought, in between the pipes. I know he wanted to shut out, and he felt very, very bad about the final goal that Mariner got, but it's a credit to, uh, uh, to Keith. He's come a long way since his sophomore year. We're proud of him. This is about his seventh victory for us, or, or sixth victory, and he's done a remarkable job, and we look forward to it for the next two years with the boy. Bobby, the kids as we were coming upstairs, they said, don't forget, mention my name, talk about the defense. Let's talk about the defense. Uh, they played pretty well, kept the puck uh, in the Mariner again most of the night. Oh, yeah, they played great. Uh, they, they couldn't even get in our zone, really, and penetrate. Uh, they got it right out, you know, as soon as they came in, and uh, they really won the game for us. Now, what I was really impressed was the way you and Keith Collins work so well together. Uh, one brings the puck in, the other's waiting on the wing, or vice versa. <laughs> yeah, me and Keith have been playing together for a long time, and uh, we really know what each other's going to do. It, it's just a great time playing with him because he's so fast, and he, and he really knows what he's doing. How about the, the guys on this team? What are the chemistry like? Is this a fun team for you to play on? Oh, it's a great team. Everybody's, everybody's friends. Uh, I mean, we have no problems. Everybody gets along. You think this might be a year for a state championship for you guys? I hope so. I sure <laughs> hope so. You're waiting a little long, yeah, aren't it's you? It's been a long time, five years. John, uh, in that vein, uh, Saturday, it's Albany Academy, uh, number two in the state. Uh, then Suffren's a little out longer down the line. The Section 1 Championships, the New York State Tournament. How's, how's it all shaping up for you, the way this team has been playing? We look forward to Albany. We honestly felt that we had them on the ropes in that 4-3 loss. We shut them down for the last 23 minutes. Being without Jeff come Saturday's going to be a struggle, but I have a confidence in this team. We shut down one of the best teams in the state, RFA. We beat one of the best ones in Ithaca. We're on a roll. We look forward to travel up to Albany, and we're going to take them up there. Honestly, we will. Is this your year? I feel we are going to take it. One of, we're going to go one, and we're going to sweep the whole thing this year. We're eight, nine, ten, eleven, whatever they are. We're not going to be the night. We've been here too many times, four to six years, and we just want to come home, put a green sign and rise. Says, "Welcome to the state champions, Rye High School." If you do that, we'll have a camera there to watch the parade when it comes in. I'm going to go down right down Purchase Street in my own car. I don't care if it's snowing; it'll be some kind of a day for us. And I just want to hug this kid. That's all I want to do when it happens. It's terrific, guys! Congratulations! Excellent game. We'll look forward. Hopefully, we'll see you in the state cha or the uh, section championship here uh, in the end of February at Playland. Thank you. Well, so, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. My Final. pleasure. Bobby Holmes, four goals in tonight's game. John Zegers, the winning coach.
as the Rye Garnets defeat the Mamaroneck Tigers here at Playland by a final of 10 to 1. Now, I want to remind you quickly before we get out of here, I made mention of it just briefly. We will be back here at Playland at the end of February, February 27th, as a matter of fact, and we will have for you the two Section 1 championships. The B Open division will be first, and then we will follow that up with the A championship. And we ask that you check the program guide for another Cable 3 Sports Special as we return to Playland for the high school hockey section one.